In this video, I'll explain the IDEA join task and show you the five different types of joins available in IDEA and show how each of them works. Why do we need to use joins? Databases in general store their data in tables. Each of these tables represents a different portion of the database. To make the link between the tables, they must have a common field. This would usually be an IDEA field. When we bring information into IDEA, seldom is all the information stored in the same database. Databases like SQL, SAP, Oracle store their data in tables. Some databases like SAP, the number of tables could be in the tens of thousands. Databases do this to lessen the chance of having information duplicated. An example is a payment file and a vendor file. Each vendor might have hundreds or thousands of transactions. You would not want to store the vendor information for each transaction, as this would take up a lot of space in the database. Plus, if the vendor changed their address, you would only want to change this once. Databases get around this by creating tables that contain specific information, such as a vendor table only having vendor information. In order for the database to associate the tables together, they have to have a common field, such as the vendor ID. So each transaction would have a vendor ID pointing to the vendor that it belongs to. When we bring the different tables into IDEA, each would be a separate IDEA database or file. With the join, we can associate the vendor information with each transaction. IDEA has five different types of joins. They are the matches only, records with no secondary match, records with no primary match, all records in primary file, all records in both files. Now I'll sort of show you how the different matches fit together and then we'll go to IDEA and do examples of each one of these. When performing a join in IDEA, we must have two files, namely the primary file and the secondary file. When we select the matches only option, what we are doing is selecting the intersection between the two. So we're only looking at common files that exist in both the primary file and the secondary file. The second, very, second match is the records with no secondary match. So what this does is it takes all transactions from the primary file that do not have a corresponding entry in the secondary file. So if we go back to the vendors and payments, if the secondary file is the payments and the primary file is the vendors, this would be all vendors that no payments have been made to during the year. Third option is records with no primary match. So again, if we're, the primary file is the vendors and the secondary file is the transactions, then in this instance, we're looking at all transactions that do not have a corresponding vendor. So payments we have made that do not have a vendor account. The fourth option is all records in primary file. So the new joined file would contain all the primary file information, even if there is no match in the secondary file. And the final option is all records in both files. This contains all transactions in the primary file and the secondary file, even if there is no join or no matching transactions between them. And when we see examples in a few minutes, you'll understand of how these matches work. I'm gonna now demonstrate how to do the different types of joins within IDEA. In order to perform a join, you always need two files and those files need one or more common fields. So first let's open up the two files that we wanna to join together or combine together and verify if there's a common field between them. So well, I'm gonna be using the sample data that comes with IDEA. If we open up the detailed sales file and the customers file, and I'm gonna display them together, we can see that the customers file has a customer number. So this would be the customer ID. At the same time, the sales detailed file also has a customer number. So if I index a customer number, we see that we have a customer number 1000 for invoice 100031. So what this means is this for this sale transaction, the customer is called Timekeepers, the company. So by performing a join, what we can do is we can associate each detailed sales transaction with its corresponding customer. So afterwards, we can perform additional analytics, but now we'll have all the information for the transaction along with the customer that the transaction goes along with. For the common fields, you can have one or you can have multiple common fields. In this instance, we only need one, but some instances you may need two, three, four. It depends how the database was originally structured. 
The only thing that has to be is that the customer number has to be of the same type. It can be of different names. In this instance, both fields are of the same name, but if they have different names, it doesn't really matter. The main thing is that they're both character fields. If one had been a numeric field, and the other one had, would have had been a character field, we would have had to change one or the other to make the join work. So in order for us to perform a join, we have to be in the an analysis ribbon, and we click on join. You'll notice that it's grayed out. The reason it's grayed out is we haven't selected a primary fi file yet. As soon as we select the primary file, we can do the join. Now I'm going to select the detailed sales as the primary file. Now you may be asking why I would select one over the other. It's very important when you're selecting the files to make sure that you select the primary file and the secondary file correctly. How IDEA works is that when it performs a join, it reads each transaction in the primary file and tries to find an associated record within the customer file or within the secondary file. So for transaction number one in the detailed sales file, it would look for customer 21254. Once it finds that, it would go into the next transaction looking to join with customer number 21256, 21257, and so on. So what it would do is it would read through all 900 records and join them, join each one or look for a corresponding customer record for each one. Now, if we took the customer file and used that as the primary file, what would happen then is we'd look for customer number 1000. It would go back to the detailed sales if that was the secondary file. And as soon as it found a transaction called 1000 with a customer number in it, it would be happy. So if there was 10, 20 detailed sales with, for customer number 1,000, using the join, it would only join on the first transaction and it would ignore all the other uh, detailed sales that come after it. So general rule of thumb, and this is only a rule of thumb, there will always be exceptions, is usually it's the larger file that is the primary and the smaller file that is the secondary. Well, like I said, this is a rule of thumb and there are exceptions. You always have to think about what you're joining with. So in this instance for the detailed sales, I wanna make sure that I have all the cust related customers for each of these sales. So that's why the detailed sales would be primary and the customers would be the secondary. So once I've done that, there's two ways of selecting join. First off, I can do click on the join under the analysis. And then I can click on select and select my secondary file. Or there's another way of doing it is that I have the primary file as the file that is active. And I go click on the secondary file. I do a right click. And there's an option to join with open database. And you'll notice that it's already pre-selected the secondary database. So different things you can do within the, da the join database dialog is of course you can select your primary database and secondary database. Also, you can select the fields you want from each of the databases. So you only need one field for each of the databases. You can, but you can have one or more. So in some instances, you may not want the first name, last name, or some other of these fields to appear in the join database. Also, you can use criteria in the primary database. So maybe you only want to look at uh, transactions or detailed sales that are larger than 5,000. So you could open up the criteria and enter that in if you wish. Then you have the different types of matches. And I've said there's five different matches here and we'll perform each one of these to see how it works. So the first one I'm gonna do is matches only. And you'll notice that there's a match button here. If I click on that, this gives me another dialog that I can select the key fields. So for this one, the key fields is the customer number. And we could select up to eight different keys. 
Now, like I was saying before, if the names were different, it would still function. If it was this was character and this was numeric, we couldn't match those fields up. We'd have to go back and change one of the databases, the fields within that database from character to numeric or vice versa. They have to be of the same type. So once we've selected the field, I click on OK. I've given it a name. Now I just click on OK. And as we can see, it gives us a new file, matches only. It's given us 897 records of the 900. If I go look at the history, it shows that there was three files that were rejected. So what this means is that for three of these detailed sales transactions, there was no corresponding customer. If I go back and look at the data, you'll see that for the primary file, it writes all the different fields at the beginning. The secondary file, all the fields are written at the end. And for any common fields, such as the customer number here, if we go over, it has renamed it to customer number one, since idea the fields can't be the same name, so it adds on a one to it. Now, we want to do the second one. Instead of going back and setting up the dialog again, we can just click on the rerun task to bring up the joint databases again. In this instance, I want records with no secondary match. So I'm just going to change the name. Everything else stays the same. Then I click on OK. And now we've got three items. And as you'll notice that these three items will be the three that were not matched when we did the primaries only. So the 3 plus the 897 gives us the 900. And since there's no secondary match, IDEA has not outputted the information from the primary uh, file because that would just be all blank and zero. So it's only outputted the, the information from the secondary file, namely the detailed sales that do not have a corresponding customer. Now we'll go back to the third option and we'll look for records with no primary match. So what this join will give us is customers that have had no detailed sales or no sales during the period. So I click on OK. Here again, primary match. So this is all the primary files. So there's 14 transactions. So we have 14 customers that have no sales during this period. Now run the next match, which is all records in primary file. Click on OK. We'll next do the fourth type of join, which is the all records in primary file. As you can see, this gives us 900 transactions. The primary file has 900 transactions. If we go to the history, it'll show us that there's unmatched records of three. So if we go back to the data, we can go see that there would be three transactions where the secondary information would be blank because there was no corresponding match. And now we'll do go back and do the fifth option, which is all records in both files. So this gives us 914 transactions. So what this is, is the 900 transactions in which we've had from the detailed sales, the primary file, plus if we notice there's no primary match, there was 14 customers that did not have any detailed sales. So those would be part of that 14. So in theory, it is the matches only of 897 plus the no secondary matches plus the no primary matches of 14 joined together to give us the 914. And as we can see, there'll be blanks here. So by doing an index on the invoice number, we can see that there's 14 primary transactions from the sales database that are blank because there was 14 uh, customers that did not have any transactions during the year. 
I hope this video helps you understand how joins work. Thank you.